Jerry at Fair Oaks. You're sure busy today. Today? I'm always busy. You've never seen me when I wasn't either working or talking. <laughs> yeah, but talking isn't work. <laughs> oh, no, no. But remember this saying, Jerry, and it's a good one. Mind now, by work you get money, by talk you get knowledge. <laughs> Say, that's all right. Oh, you bet it is. That's why I'm always doing one or the other. You, you can, it's, uh, it's not thrifty to waste time. <laughs> you should be a professor, Mac. I, I, and that I am. Uh, there's many a lad left Fair Oaks with the passing remark to me that he learned a great deal from old MacLeod. Well, so long, fellas. Uh, right. Bye. Goodbye. See Goodbye. you later. Goodbye, son. Hurry More back. ice cream, Jerry? Yeah, I'll take just a small scoop, Mac. Uh, yeah, make it two. All right, the same. Mm-hmm, yeah. I don't think I ever ordered anything but chocolate, have I, Mac? No, no, I just didn't recall that you did, Jerry. Oh, you were going to tell me about Red. Oh, yeah. Well, I was talking to Ted. All right, here you are. Here you are. Okay, and here you are. Oh, thank you, thank you, lad. You all fixed for a little while now? More water? No, all set, Mac. All right, uh, I'm going out back and burn some trash. If anyone comes in uh, and I didn't hear the bell, uh, give me a call. Yeah, okay, Mac, we will. Now, what were you going to say? Well, Ted said that Red had been stripped of his bars, for one thing. Oh, well, I knew that would happen. That was the least to expect. And they've taken away his liberties, his passes. He can't take part in any athletic activities. And to top it off, he's confined to his quarters for 30 days. Uh, just what does that mean, Lee? Well, that means that as soon as school's over every day, he has to go right to his room and study. But he deserves every bit of it. It'll give him time to think. You know, Lee... I, I wouldn't be surprised if he turned out to be a different sort of a person after his punishment is all over. Oh, I wish he would. You know, he's got some nice qualities. He's a great athlete, but... Well, if he changes, it'll be a surprise to me. And I'll bet I'm not the only one. We'll hope for the best. Oh, say, you forgot the most important thing. What did Sergeant Alden talk to you about after drill practice? Hey, I did forget. That's the best news ever. Hey, can you guess? Well, I think I can, but it'll be more fun if you tell me. Go ahead. Oh, I sure you know what it is. I'm going to get to ride Splendor. Oh, Jerry, that's keen. Gee, I'm sure glad for you. Warren's arm won't be better until after we meet Edson Military Institute for the Hunter Craig Trophy, so I'm going to get the pivot position. Gee, everything turned out swell, didn't it? Uh-huh. But, gee, I'm sure sorry that Warren had to get hurt in order for me to get the position. Yeah. Well, how's he getting along? You saw him this morning. Oh, okay. He feels great, outside of his arm being all taped up. And you know what he said? What? He blames himself for his broken collarbone. He said if he was a better horseman, he would have clung on and brought Splendor to a stop without falling off and getting hurt, even though the saddle did slip. A better horseman. <laughs> That's just like him, though. He's all right. I like Paul. And you've got to make good in his spot now, or he'll feel badly about it. Oh, don't worry. We'll make a great team. Team? What are you talking about? Well, Splendor and me. <laughs> oh, well, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> what? No more customers? It is kind of dull today. <laughs> yes, there's... There's an officer's meeting this afternoon, and all of my very best ice cream customers are in, in that meeting. And, and a couple of very fine soda customers, too. <laughs> oh, that smoke. Uh, where's Harold Linwell and Tubby? You boys are always together. Did you desert them today? I don't know where Tubby went, but Harold's coming over. He said he was, anyway. Hey, Mac. Yes, Lee? Uh, haven't you thought of something else to work on yet? Work on? Yeah, he means something to invent. 
You said you'd think of something any day now. Oh, I, 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 I did that. And, uh, well, I, I have thought of something. Well, now, don't tell us it's another secret and you're not going to let us in on it because you <laughs> promised you would, remember? <laughs> yeah, that's right. You said the next thing you work on, we'd be partners. You said Dugan, Phillips, and McLeod. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. And I'll keep my promise, yes, sir. I'll write you the letter. <laughs> well, what is a new idea? Well, I really haven't an idea, but I've a mind to work on something with chemicals. One of the boys brought his chemistry book over and, and well, I'm, I'm studying up on it. It's a great subject. Such a person to thinking. I'll figure out something soon. You mark my words. Yeah, and we'll help you with it. Lee and I are taking chemistry, and we'll be a big help. Oh, you're in on it. Don't worry. Yes, sir. My word's as good as my bond. McLeod, Phillips, and Dugan it'll be. Hey, wait a minute. The last time it was Dugan, Phillips, and McLeod, and now you put McLeod first. <laughs> hey, how come? Did I do that? Well, I'm sorry. I guess my tongue got in front of me. I too, so I couldn't see what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's evening papers, Mac. Well, I brought five more than usual tonight. Big headline. They ought to sell like hotcakes. Oh, yes. All right, come on. All right, lad, goodbye. And you want me to put them in the rack for you, Mac? Yes, Lee, uh, that's nice of you. Thanks. That uh, newsboy doesn't know what he's talking about, Mac. Oh, uh, this couldn't be one of those Dugan jokes coming up now, could it? <laughs> yes, it could be. Well, go ahead. Don't uh, don't let me suffer. Get it over with. <laughs> well, he said the papers would sell like hotcakes tonight. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, uh, oh, and you're going to say they don't sell hotcakes at night, eh? Uh-uh. They sell hotcakes three at a time with syrup on. Oh. And uh, let me know when you start selling papers that <laughs> way. <laughs> what is it? What, Lee? Look at this headline. Then read this. Oh, this is awful. Well, let me see. Let, lay the paper out in the counter here. Now, listen. Here's the headline. Country's number one test pilot crashes. Hey, that's Guy Linwell, oh. Harold's dad. Oh, I gosh. know, I know. Listen to this now. Moreland Field. Guy Linwell, rated as this country's greatest test pilot, crashed to Earth early today in a government bomb. Oh, that's bad. Very bad. Go ahead, Lee. Uh, the huge bombing plane recently completed for the government by the Leighton Aircraft Company was being put through its final load test while government engineers looked on. Guy Linwell, who's been testing every type of ship for the Leighton Aircraft Company and who is familiar with a heavier type of bomber, took off alone at 12.45 for what was to have been the last test before delivering the ship to the government. Hurry up, Lee. Was he killed? Well, now, wait now. Let's read it all. Uh, under perfect weather conditions, the big Leighton bomber took off smoothly and quickly rose to an approximate 5,000-foot altitude. Observers declare the huge plane then went into a power dive, and Linwell was apparently not able to pull it out in time. Gee, you haven't got a chance when a heavy ship like that goes into a dive. They're too heavy. Uh, uh, read, uh, read ahead a little, Lee, and, and see how badly Linwell was banged up. Yeah. Oh, he, he couldn't have been killed. They would have mentioned that first. Yeah, okay, uh, listen to this. A hasty examination of the craft showed no apparent cause for the crash. A government board of inquiry will convene. Uh, turn to page four. Hey, look, there's a picture of Harold's dad. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, I, uh, there's the article you want to read right there. Mm -hmm. uh, we know the plane smashed up. Now, let's find out about Linwell. Uh, let me read it. Okay, go ahead. Let's see now. Uh, it starts right here. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Guy Linwell, foremost test pilot, miraculously escaped death in bomber crash. Oh, gee, what'll Harold do? Oh, it's badly, it's bad. Uh, Guy Linwell, considered the country's foremost test pilot and two-time winner of the annual Leighton-sponsored Speed Classic, Today crashed a Leighton-built government bomber in a wooded pasture about four miles from Moreland Field. The gigantic aircraft, falling out of control from an altitude of about 5,000 feet, pancaked into a hillside pasture. Hey, listen to this now. Uh, Lady Luck rides with Linwell. In crashing, the right motor of the huge ship snapped a large oak tree, causing it to fall across the fore part of the plane and extinguish the fire that immediately broke out. This piece of luck, airport officials believe, saved Linwell from being burned to death in the cabin of the ship. Oh, yeah, that was certainly luck. Gee, that must have been a terrible crash. Condition serious. Hey, uh, here it tells about him. Yeah. Uh, doctors summoned to the Moreland Field Emergency Hospital report Linwell suffering from fractured right arm, possible skull fracture, several broken ribs, punctured lung, and internal injuries. While his condition is considered very serious, it is hoped his life will be spared. He is to be removed to a hospital as soon I as his condition I feel terrible is... about this. I, I don't know. I, I feel that I know him. Harold's talked about him so much and, and read his letters to me. Oh, yeah. I, uh, this isn't going to do Harold any good either. Well, maybe we better try to keep him from knowing. Poor uh, kid. He loves his dad so much. 
Oh, I oh hope Losh. Did. What is it, man? Oh, here he comes. He's coming across the street now. Who? Harold. Oh. Hey, quick, what are we saying? Well, don't say a thing. Don't say a thing. Just don't mention oh, it. Oh, the papers. Oh, I'll get them. I'll put them behind the counter. Uh, throw that one down behind the counter. Yeah. yeah. Now, now get your mind off of it. Uh, uh, talk about something. Quick, hurry up, uh, hurry up. Well, so I... Uh, uh, dear, it's great you're going to get to ride Splendor, Jerry. Yeah. Hi, Hi, uh, fellas. Hi, Hello, Mac. Oh, hello, Harold. This is a surprise welcome. Uh, hiya, Harold. Yeah, well, what kept you so long? You said you were coming right over. Oh, I got a letter from my dad today, and I wanted to get an answer off to him right away, so I just wrote him a couple of pages. Uh, well, uh, what do you have, Harold? Uh, let me have a bottle of pop. Oh, I, uh, strawberry, cream soda, lemon, orange, grape, or root beer, or... Uh, uh, give me the grape. I like that. Oh, uh, yes, grape it is. I got a keen letter from Dad. Leighton Aircraft just made a big bomber for the government, and he's been testing it. Uh, here you are, Harold. No, oh, take it out of this, Mac. Oh, all right, Lee. I'll pay for my own, Lee. Oh, no, no, the treat's on me. Gee, thanks. Hey, uh, what did your dad have to say in the letter? I got it here. I'll read part of it. Let's see. Uh, here's the part. Uh, this new bomber is the prettiest ship you've ever seen. I wish you could see, uh, be here, son, to see it. I'm making the final test day after tomorrow, and the ship will be turned over to the government. Day after tomorrow. Let's see. Sure, that's to, that's to the day. I sure hope the tests are okay. It's no easy job to test those great big planes. Yeah, I'll bet it's not. Well, what else did he say? Well, at the end, he said if he could manage to get oh. away for a few days, he was coming down here to Fair Oaks oh. to see me. Yes. He did, huh? Uh, some more root beer for you, Jerry? No, I've got Where's nothing. Well, finish yours, Harold, and have another one. Oh, no, I couldn't drink any more than this. I'm not thirsty. Thanks, anyway. Uh, Harold, uh, that uh, phone call was for you. What? For me? Uh, yes, uh, it was uh, Mrs. Gardner. She, she wants you to come right over to her office. You'd better hurry, Harold. It's important. Okay, I'll go right away. But I wonder what Mrs. Gardner wants from me. I just saw her when I came over here, and she didn't say anything to me then. Uh, come on, Lee. Let's walk back over with her. Yeah, yeah okay. Uh, see you later, Matt. Uh, I, uh, goodbye, lads. Uh, keep your chins up. Uh, you know what I mean, Jerry? Yeah, I got you, Mac. Uh, go ahead, Harold. What did Mac mean by that? Keep your chins up. Oh, he, oh, he always says that. You know, Mac. But he said, you know what I mean, Jerry. Well... Whenever there's anything important. Well, do you know what I mean? I mean, you're supposed to keep your chin up. I bet he met me. I bet Mrs. Gardner told him what the important thing was. No, I don't think so. But he did say it was important, whatever it is. And, well, just... Oh, you know, just uh, to be... be... prepared, Harold. No, not that. But, well, if it's real important, you want to be sort of ready for it. Hey, I'm getting scared. I got a funny feeling... Yeah, I wonder if you, you know, maybe... maybe now, maybe. Harold, take it easy. Wait until you get there. If it's something important, you have to know about it. And, well, come on now. We're your pals. We, we won't let you down. <laughs> <laughs>